topic. So Timo, please go ahead. Okay, hi everyone. So I tried a different approach to present my, my topic. Uh, I created a path on a, on a whiteboard this time. I hope, and I apologize already, if you get confused or amazed, um, it's, a, it's a tryout and yeah, I, I, I will definitely take something um, with me presenting. So let's start the, uh, the path I want to take you to. So firstly, I want to present myself. I'm Timo Hunger. Uh, I, uh, I studied computer science in, in Vienna, I moved to, to Zurich for 10 years, worked there in finance and took the art school there. And this is why I'm very famous for my, my abstract artworks, which I also try to, to present in my presentations all the time, as you can see. You can connect with me uh, via timid.dev, which is more or less my uh, web profile where you can find Discord and GitHub links. I hope so. Or you just search for this guy on the internet or in, in diverse social media uh, yeah, uh, platforms. So the topic that I took was developer experience and I wanted to make a journey to what developer experience is. And while I created this presentation, of course, the topic changed for me because I found out, and I'm a developer, that actually developer experience is everywhere. We have a bad automation experience or a good automation experience. We have interactive Jupyter net, uh, notebooks, which might be uh, delightful to use and which we can use as documentation. We could have meetings which are yeah, more or less boring, or we could have uh, yeah, uh, designed for having a good design experience of architectures, which we um, can create and, and design on. So. We could even design on pull requests or handoffs from design to dev team. So very much to, to grasp there. And what I found out for myself that everything of this is actually experience design. And this is why this topic changed a bit from a technical perspective to a design thinking perspective. And I want to give you a journey there because you are able and everyone is able to design for a good experience. Is it in your processes? Is it in your bots? Is it a meeting design? And I will give some examples there, some tools you could use, which I used already in, uh, in my career and which you might uh, find delightful also to use and design for. So, and what is it all about and which tools that I want to uh, present you to, and it's of course design thinking, that's the tool that we all know already or the most of the people you know, but we don't normally in our developer experience or when we create tools, when we create CLIs, we always forget about one important step, and this is why I put the heart on there, it's empathize, getting down or on the same eye uh, height with my user? Is it internally? Is it externally like a customer which I'm uh, developing APIs for or CLIs for? We always forget about that. So I will cover more now the internal perspective. So the, the tools we create for us, the processes that we create for us, and I will just cover this, uh, the steps now briefly and hopefully uh, give you an impression how you could then use these tools in your daily life. So empathize is, as I said, get to the uh, right height to, to your user, find out emotions which you could use uh, in, in your processes. In Is it creating a Jira ticket or is it creating a, I don't know, web applications with a CLI, it doesn't matter, you can empathize with that. And at that step, you could create, for example, personas or empathy maps. You could already use them in further steps to develop ideas. So normally you would get, uh, as I said, this is a, or not said yet, this is an interactive nonlinear process, which, the, which they call design thinking. So you can or cannot use all the phases of this. You can interconnect these phases in your teams and um, use tools as you like in your daily work. You don't have to be in a team. I did this uh, several times alone when we had prototyping days or something like this. When I had an idea to develop uh, a presentation to develop, I, I actually tried to do this with that uh, path that I created. I hope it's 
somehow an interesting design at least. And normally we, in our daily developer experience thing, we start with one simple uh, question that we have. We want to have something cool and we want to solve it. And that normally is reflected already in code. We don't really think about it. I need a tool to challenge something. I need a, a Jira ticket template I want to create. And I don't think about it, how it could develop further into a, a tool for, for internal use or even a product and for out, uh, external use. And we normally start at the prototype phase, which we never leave. And maybe this tool gets dusty then, this experience will never be used or it's just engaging for me. And what I want you to take actually with you in this or from this presentation or talk is design thinking or design in general and taking all this design stuff in my daily developer work is thinking outside of the box. We do things uh, very uh, in, in rituals with all this agile uh, thingies that we, we do all the time. We know how to do git pulls and so on. At this time, when you create a new experience for yourself or for your team, regardless if it's a process in Jira or whatever, Maybe you can think outside of the box and use some of the tools that I show you and some of the examples that I, I put together uh, in this talk. So, so, where does the journey go? To some deliverables you could use, and there are much, much more of them, but I took three, which every, every developer is actually capable of doing. And they are more in the area of really empathize here with your users, with your colleagues, maybe with external users, maybe partners, and creating ideas for your, for your CLIs, for your APIs, for your bots, whatever you create for, for usage somewhere. And one of this uh, very, very simple um, deliverable would be, for example, a persona where I really tell a story about um, a fictive uh, colleague that I have, this guy would be now more or less me, a full stack guy with some hobbies like horse riding. And he wants to shorten the time he spends on peers. That could be a simple goal for designing and uh, for starting the design process actually. And after that, we could go into an ideation process. How could we shorten the time to spend on peers? Except um, in contrast to um, already creating a tool or a process or some kind of, um, I don't know, documentation, how we could tackle this and getting really in a design process where, where all the ideas come together and uh, are fit to these personas that we create. Another tool could be an empathy map, which will would cover more the um, user groups like software engineers or front-end engineers uh, and, and covering what are they thinking? What are they talking about? What do they really need? Uh, what I'm designing these tools for, these APIs for. Uh, really getting down, down to the user, maybe already write some sort of code here. It, it doesn't matter. You find out maybe you design it already wrong in your head. And this is also a, um, a nice way to get away from this technical thinking, from this step-by-step uh, yeah, -step thinking. So we have an iterative process here, a creative process, which we don't normally do all the time. And this brings me to the third delivery, which normally everyone can do even for your, I don't know, for your hobby projects and so on. You can do it alone in a team. You can put your wife in there, uh, create the user journey of this process of this. I, I don't say create, you, you can create one if you like, um, with the goals of, of, of this tool or, or the steps, uh, some thoughts in it. Covering really the emotions, is this tool or which I have in mind, is it really useful to, to someone else? Do I feel enlightened or delighted when, when I use this CLI to create a web application? And then what are the opportunities to really build even something greater out of it? Or maybe I find out I really don't need this thing. It's already out there. There would be a process of researching, of course, but I don't cover Googling in this talk. Yeah, of course, there are much, much more tools out there, or many, many more, I'm sorry. And you, I already put some links somewhere, uh, some good resources for, for really getting some design thinking tools or how designers think and how I could 
elaborate this in my process of creating tools and processes and so on are the, the D school uh, design thinking bootleg, which has all this uh, um, exercises in there. And of course, the interaction design foundation, which has a very, very good documentation of the design uh, thinking process at all. Uh, and in a way that everyone understands it. So I go back to in my path here. So, and of course we can do this already. So we don't have a one dimensional teams nowadays anymore, um, but you could of course, I, I come to this uh, in a second. And what I find out more and more is that we have a lot of, of mixed roles already. So we have engineer designers, for example, and design coders, and they already use these tools that I described before, these design thinking tools in their daily work. So they may be good designers and then they code this already. So they, they have to the process in, 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 in the blood, so to say. But you could also define yourself maybe as a .NET uh, backend developer. And then I have to say, everyone can learn design and everyone can learn to code. And this would also uh, uh, point to, uh, this I would also point to a designer where I could say, okay, you can learn a bit to code. And in this multidisciplinary teams, when it comes to developer experience, we can develop uh, with the tools that are described, nice and engaging experiences. And now we are at the gate of concreteness. <laughs> And I put some examples which are very important to, some of which are very important to me, some which are very, let's say, crazy. And actually, I want to inspire you to use these tools daily and maybe also to problems where you would not even think to use such a design thinking technique. And one of this, which is very important, and I always, I always fight, fought for this in, in, in my past, is one moment, I make this a bit bigger, designing for a meeting experience. And this is much more important nowadays where we have blocked calendars with a lot of meetings with practically no outcome for everyone. We have a lot of invitees there. Not everyone asks questions, not everyone is necessary there. And you can use this design thinking te techniques. And this is by the way, a template you could use. This is a more, uh, a complicated one to really design uh, how this meeting should end, what I want at the end of the meeting, or what every one of this meeting wants in the end. And I could do this already with the tools that I described. So you would, uh, you would set really the who is attending there, what's the purpose, what's the desired outcomes, defining the processes and who attends. This is now this empathizing stage that I meant. Who is attending? A software developer, he might need something different. He would expect something different. Uh, you could already put names in there. Is it the guy who asks questions? And I could already decide how could I engage this guy uh, if he does not ask questions to ask these questions finally or to participate in some small amount at least in my uh, presentation or in my meetings. And you don't have to take all this, uh, uh, the, the whole template. The right thing is uh, to get something out of the meetings, to really design it through and what I, uh, and what you want to get out of this. So long story short, there I came up in, in the past with something uh, more simple for, for meeting. Uh, design and this is more from a systemic coach perspective. Uh, in in German, this would be called Tatsar, and it would uh, uh, would mean Thema Anliegen Ziel Auftrag. And this is what I normally design my smaller meetings for. I really sketch who is attending, what are their emotions, how are they feeling. Uh, sketch the topics that I want to uh, uh, cover in these things, what are wishes, what I want to, to get out of these meetings, what is the goal of the meeting at all, and what activities I plan in this meeting. Is it a brainstorming or something else? Just as an inspiration. And actually, this sentence, create your own meeting experience and design a framework, means um, for me, you can do this for everything. Uh, that I'm talking in this presentation now. So you can create your own activities, you can create your own design thinking practices, 
I mean, there are tons of books out there and you I, actually you can mix everything you like. And now I come as promised to this crazy, crazy uh, examples that they put together and some realistic ones that I thought of. So let's get the path down here. One would be designing for a CLI experience. And actually this is now a very, uh, this is an example of a str straightforward process where you already have implemented, you were already in the prototype state of, uh, for example, a CLI to scaffold a, a ticket in a ticketed system for me in, in a simple way and creating branches and whatever. And actually, this is what we are already doing sometimes. We give this tool to a colleague who thinks, oh, that's very cool. It's awesome. And I have already some new ideas how we can improve it in the future. And then we are already in the design thinking process. There was the user test already before. And this is what I meant before with the nonlinear process of, uh, of designing experiences or in our case, dev experiences or in the topic of this presentations, we, we, we can mix these phases all from, from the very beginning. What could come next? We could form a team and empathize a bit, create personas or user journey maps as I showed before. And maybe we come out, actually there is, we, we don't need, no one else needs a tool, just, just myself. Or I find out, hey, this, guy already talked about this, maybe I form a persona or do a user journey map to form and create much more ideas for my CLI. Yeah, and this could be, as we always do, in a brainstorming process or putting these ideas then in categories and then of course feeding it back into my prototype process and test processes where the user already can test. So nothing against starting at the prototyping phase here. So prototype and test early is actually the division. Another example would be designing for an API experience. And this uh, is already for me a bit a crazy example, using design thinking principles to design an API. In this case, I, I took the example of a, yeah, a, a web API and thought, okay, we have this task to, to maybe create an API for, for an insurance company. And how, how, how do I start? So maybe I have a, a user, a real, real life user who's called Rhonda Ruth Raymond. She's, she's 42, she's an actor, has two children, hobbies are climbing or whatever. And she has some kind of technology affinity. So she's a, she's a math guy, she loves this modeling with numbers and so on. And she's used, for example, some Jupyter notebook coding experience. And I have a second user. This is actually my crazy idea. So I create the persona for, uh, let's say, a program, a non-living uh, thing in the space of my API, which maybe uses this API. And I choose here Ronnie, Ronnie Chatbot, who loves to answer this question about an insurance which I might have bought and which and this would be a user really from the other direction uh, and it, it's a bot user, right? So he wants really to most to grab data via RESTful interface. So he really spoke about this with me. And what the nice thing about this empathism stage in an early stage is already, you can communicate with that. You can tell a story about Ronnie Jetbot and Rhonda Ruth Raymond and how they interact in an endurance system. I took insurance because I was in finance, by the way, I told you before. So then there is a, a nice and easy technique that I can use in my, in my daily life to define really my, my requirements at this stage after empathizing. What do I really need or how might we achieve an engaging interface for both? Using it in Jupyter notebooks and maybe how might the development team uh, use that? And out of that, I can create, of course, again, a brainstorming idea. What technologies you might use, how this interface may look like. I can put everything in there. I can categorize it with all the tools that we know from the design thinking process and already ask critical questions. Do we need some GraphQL stuff in there? Does it have a Python client? And also grasping um, technical details there. And of course, design details uh, like, uh, yeah, we could use this and that type system from, from uh, in my GraphQL uh, schemas and so on. And what comes out here is already maybe a prototype and, and the first test with a, with a mock node GraphQL server. 
um, with the limitations or with the cool features and this engaging uh, GraphQL uh, uh, development environments feed back to new ideas and maybe to new personas. I did not uh, draw the, the, the arrow here, uh, which let me define exactly new new questions for from from my api and this is uh, and then we are already in a very interactive process where this api can already be tested and already be uh, verified by user and is extended somehow or will never live maybe depending and then i have that's one of my baby uh, ideas which i actually have for idea for a prototype and um, this is designing for a hand of experience. And normally it runs that way. You have an UX team which uh, researches and talks with the user and tries to yeah, find out what, what are the best uh, user experience, how this design system looks, and how can I make this hand of experience maybe in a mixed team better if I'm already, or how can I make this design hand of experience to a developer more aut automized and um, yeah, delightful for, for an engineer and also for, for the designer because it doesn't have to provide the ideas all the time when he changes something. And actually the question that I'm asking all this, being in a lot of front-end uh, uh, related topics uh, is how might we lose, le lose less design in communicating these design decisions and the interactions of the system. This is a very complicated path. And uh, for, I, I also don't have an answer yet. This is why this process is not yet, not, not yet done here, right? It's far from prototype here. And, but I started already to do a bit of an ideation process. And how we do it normally currently is we, we are using uh, some kind of design tool and copying, pasting CSS somehow out of it. Okay, yeah, we, we did this before. We used the discussion, we used this feedback loop. We, we lose a lot of time developing all the time the, the, the things that we have already done in, in past projects. We are already developing large CSS code bases. So, and then there is a darling for, for me, for example, and this is a, a plugin which generates a, a component-driven design template out of the design systems when it's configured the correct way. And this could be, for example, a storybook, which is used very, very much in, uh, nowadays, where you really have the stories of your components uh, in there. And it produces, of course, uh, already the components themselves, for example, for React and so on, and also the CSS and the documentation. And this is a darling for me. And there are already uh, some, some tools out of there, uh, which give me a nice developer experience already, but it could be much better. And this is why I want to have this ideation process for myself. And on the long shot, this is more a psychological question. In these mixed teams that I described before, do we really need this handoff anymore? Can we just start coding and designing in code? That's more a question for the future. So that was a real idea from, 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 from my life now. So I hope it also gave some inspiration how you could use all these tools before you even start and of course you, as said you can start over the prototyping phase there's nothing wrong and now i'm already coming a bit to an end here um, there is no rules of thumb um, you can use as many or or no tool at all to do this, but I really want to engage you to, to think about your, your daily developer life, how you create these tools for your colleagues or uh, in, in the teams that we are, we are creating these experiences, something they are delightful, something not. And, um, and maybe this could be a way to really create an overall company or team developer experience or experience at all. And to come to a conclusion here, I want to create some, this is an advertising, let's say slide here or point here. Um, I created because I'm, I'm five months here now in, in Klagenfurt and I found out there is no Interaction Design Foundation local group in Klagenfurt and I already 
was appointed as a leader there. I'm the only member too. So I want to encourage you, maybe not, you don't have to join the Interaction Design Foundation, but there is already a, a Slack room, and I call it XT Clafou. And I want to organize workshops which tackle all these things, maybe already in a developer experience topic collection. So really working together in mixed teams on tools that we might have in, in mind. Is it a designer or office manager or whatever? Everyone can come and we design, maybe in design sprints, like Google does it. We design already these experiences and find out how can we um, yeah, create this, this design process in our developer work. So, so everyone welcome. Yeah. So uh, then maybe some additional resources you could use. There is uh, developer experience IO, which has some more not so design related topics, but yeah, more, <laughs> sorry, I just read the chat, chat topic. And more really a collection of all the processes that we have in companies and teams and describe what is good experience or not. And then we have the D-School that I mentioned, the UX design uh, uh, CC block, which is very good. You can get design and you can get design thinking, uh, inspirations for your daily developer work. And I mentioned already, it's very popular topic in the last two or three years already. And it comes, comes, comes more and more for designing or producing already prototypes. Where they, all, where they use um, design thinking tools, and but, but, but also other things. Um, this is design sprints, which uh, there's also a book, a very good one. Maybe it was, would be work in other talk in future about that, but you can yeah, do this journey on your own now. So some last words. So of course, this design thinking and developer experience things are a lot of hot air, I would say. You can take something with you or not. I hope you got some inspiration. I hope it wasn't too boring and I hope I did not talk too confusing. And I hope you enjoyed it at all. And with that, as design thinking is an iterative process, we are at the end here. <laughs> Great, and with that, we're also at the start, namely of Q&A. So we already have some questions. I just want to mention the uh, chat comment there. Uh, there was uh, the question, can you please post the, the Slack link to the chat? That would be awesome. Um, there are two questions in Slido already. So thinking of a typical software engineering uh, approach or an epic uh, sorry for that uh, which roles thinking of that epic which roles product management developers architects would you recommend to include in a design thinking workflow actually the more the better i would say uh, and the more disciplines are in there the more insights you have what you're maybe designing wrong or maybe uh, think of wrong. So actually you could also include the cleaning lady if you like, maybe she has some ideas, maybe she, she doesn't know what we're talking about, of course, but maybe she sees something uh, which would be uh, a, a cool idea for my design thinking process. So the more so the better is the answer, yeah. The more the better and the, the more diverse, the better, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, um, then actually uh, another interesting question. What are your plans for your design thinking initiative in Klagenfurt, meetups, workshops? Could you please elaborate a bit more on this? So currently we're at the beginning, I'm the only, only member in this workshop uh, or in this interaction design foundation group now. And I think I, I, I forced some of my, uh, two of my team colleagues to, to join their two <laughs> we're sending an invitations and now they are locked in. No. I guess you invited them, you didn't force them, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they had to click the link. Uh, the idea is now to come up with, uh, let's say, an agenda which topics to cover in the future. So, so picking mo um, more developer experience and design thinking and user experience or experience design topics now out the box. Everyone is welcome to, to contribute there. 
and really creating an agenda. Currently, we will do a bit more live tooling, maybe with the Figma board I, uh, I showed or, or some, some other tools. And maybe I will, will also ask for questions from your daily developer or designer work, which you want to tackle in this, in this let's say, work groups then uh, here in Klagenfurt. And I hope sometimes, and this is a bit, bit of vision for myself, I want to do um, interaction design in park. So also kind of this initiative and really do it outside, maybe in Lakeside or in the university park with uh, really paper prototypes and such things. Uh, so actually everything is allowed and I will think about an agenda, what we can take in now digitally and what would be cool to have it really when we are all vaccinated or tested or whatever, then now in the nice summer months, long story short. Very cool. So, so you're you're in the process of of bootstrapping that. I'll I, if it's okay for you, I'll post a link to your webpage, also to the chat. I think sure. uh, there is all the contact uh, information there to to reach out, right? Right. Yeah. And how how can I post the link to to the Slack channel? I, I don't find. Ah, maybe I have to sh stop sharing. I already a weird user experience here. Yeah, you you never find the chat in Sorry. in Zoom, right? <laughs> okay, um, I have a personal question. Uh, I, I like the idea of designing meetings or thinking about uh, that. Uh, that was interesting. Could you could you share? You know uh, that that. Uh, you know what I do. You well. find you find all the all these tips and materials. Uh, I hope I did not went through too fast. Where, where is it? Sorry for that. Uh, I will post that too. In, in there somewhere. I can share this, I think. Very cool. Are there any other questions uh, that the group might, might have? Okay, no more questions. Then, uh, yeah, Timo, this was a, a, a different topic. Very interesting. Uh, I, I also would like to follow up uh, on this and maybe join. Um, yeah, there is uh, a question there that I was heading towards that, the future of Lakeside Talks, right? An important question. Um, so as I said in the beginning, uh, this was uh, the first edition of the Lakeside Talks. We will be having the Lakeside Talks on a regular basis. So for now, we plan to have a meetup every four months. Uh, let's see if that cadence is okay, but, uh, but please also reach out to us. Um, you can use uh, meetup data. Uh, you can uh, also find the link there to um, the Lakeside Tech Events uh, website. Um, get in contact with us. Uh, we would be happy to see talks uh, from a broader audience, from multiple people. Uh, next time, hopefully, it will happen on site. We will be having the Lakeside Talks in the Lakeside Park, specifically in the Lakeside Spitz. So that's basically the administrative building of the Lakeside Park, the white one um, in, in the park, the only one without uh, that much you know, wood uh, on the outside. Uh, and uh, we will be meeting there uh, and uh, hopefully we will see a lot of participants uh, for the Lakeside Talks also in the future. Um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, you find more information uh, on the meetup.com page. Uh, I'm sure uh, you know it already. Uh, and um, there we will be posting also updates regarding upcoming events. Uh, check out uh, everything we have there. Um, get in touch with us. Uh, would be awesome to see a lot of people in person here in the Lakeside Park in four months from now.